Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. It is week number two of the flood cleanup. We are making progress to the extent that Highway 1 between Abbotsford and Chilliwack is now open. Local politicians and how they have been personally affected by all of this. A touch of Christmas brightens downtown while we're all stressed out over the flood events. As well, UFV and Trinity Western putting the sports seasons on hold for a week. Our special guests this week include, and it's a long list, Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Strahl, FERD Chair Jason Lum, Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Padden, and from Kindness Chain Chilliwack, Zeeshan Khan. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Our top story. The floodwaters in Abbotsford and Yarrow are slowly receding. The watch in the skies continues. The rain continues to fall, not with the same force as that atmospheric river that deluged us between the 13th and the 15th. The main repair on Sumas Dyke in Abbotsford is pretty much done. Crews expect another five feet of height to be added to the dike prior to this next weather event, starting Thursday and rolling probably into the weekend. It will be another atmospheric river, but not as strong as the last one. Additional crews to be moved to the erosion of the dike upstream of Atkinson once the repairs are complete. The dike repairs near Barrowtown and Cole Road are now done. The BC Dairy Association saying some 500 cattle did die during the flooding in Abbotsford and Chilliwack, and that number could rise, but roughly 6,000 cattle have been moved out of the flood zone and out of harm's way. Now, on a personal level, even politicians are not immune to this disaster. First, FVRD Chair, Chilliwack City Councilor and Yarrow resident Jason Lum on how the floods impacted him personally. We're not worried right now. We're just working together and uh, the goodwill is there to continue offering mutual aid and support where we can. Um, I know each and every one of my colleagues on council and the mayor have been <laughs> working extremely long days. They've been doing the very best that they can with what they have, the tools available to them. Everybody has their own different skill sets. And you know what? It's easy to point fingers in an emergency. I've signed literally I don't know, I'm gonna say 50 evacuation orders for people. I've never been under one myself. You don't know how you react when you're under your own order, when you're told get out immediately, take the things that you need to go and leave immediately. You know, and so you, you gotta give people, uh, you know, you gotta give them uh, some leeway in my opinion. And um, that's what I'm trying to do right now, trying to be kind, trying to work uh, to help people where they need help. And uh, that's where my focus lies. Similar to Jason Lum and uh, what he has been dealing with on a personal level, we asked the same in a recent interview with Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton. She lives in Lindell Beach. And an update on the situation with her neighbors, not only around Lindell Beach, but also Cultus Lake. Um, I think we're fairly unscathed up there other than um, the pictures from the lake are coming in, Maple Maple Bay especially, um, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of. But uh, I'm seeing on social media that everyone is seems to be doing well from the area that I am. Um, and the focus is really on the people who are most affected right now. And there are a number of GoFundMe pages that are set up to help everybody from farmers to seniors to those in need of pumps, sandbags, clothes, or just being there as a shoulder to lean on. Just go to GoFundMe and then punch in Chilliwack or the flood of BC and you will find a GoFundMe page. Z 
Zishan Khan is the executive director for Kindness Chain Chilliwack. And in an interview that Chill TV taped earlier this week, Zishan talks about how the organization started and how they have been uh, activated to assist victims of this past week's flood. They continue their drive to make sure those in need of groceries do not go hungry, especially seniors. getting uh, groceries together. And uh, I noticed also on your Facebook page, which is Kindness Chain Chilliwack, you're also looking for things like Huggies. Uh, so is this the priority, I would assume, for the next week? Yes, that's what the, that's what the thing is, uh, Don. Actually, when, when, this, when this flooding started, it had a different scenario, but now the people are going back to their homes. So they are more into the long-term care kind of a thing for a few weeks at least. So that's where our focus was. When this thing started, our focus was on the immediate needs, but now our focus is turning towards a little bit of long-term needs. So what we did was in the start, when we heard about this, immediately we made two grocery uh, collection centers, one on the north side of Chilliwack and one on the, one on the east side, side of Chilliwack. <laughs> With mail delivery suspended in Merritt and parts of Abbotsford, Colchina, and Yarrow, Canada Post is getting the word out that eligible residents and businesses who have been displaced are being offered free mail forwarding services for the next 12 months. So all you have to do is go to Canada Post's website for all the information on that. Canadian Pacific reopened the railway between Kamloops and Vancouver on Tuesday. CN followed the day later. This is the rail line that parallels the low heat highway and away from the majority of the flood damage. As was the case last year, the CP holiday train in December to aid food banks across the country will be a virtual affair. Normally that train stops in Agassiz with live concerts. And again, the CN line, which runs through Chilliwack and Abbotsford, has reopened. That's the one that rolls through the Fraser Canyon. The introduction of the Canada Workers Lockdown Benefit is in the House of Commons this week as MPs are back to work. The benefit is expected to include $300 a week. It's strictly available to workers who, and we quote, whose work interruption is a direct result of a government-imposed public health lockdown. Now, this is available until May 7th of next year. Retroactive application to October 24th of this year, should your situation warrant it. And when we return, some Christmas news. And now, Christmas. It's exactly one month until Christmas, if you can believe it. With everything that has happened in the last couple of weeks, it's understandable you might have been a bit distracted, but there's enough Black Friday advertising out there to remind us. With a number of Christmas events that are canceled or in doubt this year, we want to highlight some wonderful upcoming events that, yes, are still on. First off, opening December the 4th, the downtown Chilliwack Country Christmas Village. Located right downtown at two sister locations, an outdoor event, that facility at Yale and the Paramount parking lot, and a beautiful 6,000 square foot indoor village in the vacant Old Phillips building, that's the corner of Nowell and Yale. Now that'll feature rides, some great food, a Christmas train, and all sorts of family fun brought to you by Fantasy Farms in conjunction with the downtown BIA and the city of Chilliwack. And don't tell the kidlets this, I understand Santa will be there. Now remember, you do have to pre-register. For tickets, go to pdscountrychristmas.ca, get your QR code for that, as well as bringing your vaccination proof for the indoor events. That will all be required. Also, the second annual Rotary Christmas Show on Chill TV, presented by Mountain View Harley-Davidson and Mountain View Motorsports. Now, like last year, this event will feature music, comedy, drama, and dance from local artists and schools. It will premiere on Chill TV December the 16th at 7 o'clock. Watch for it on all of our social media platforms. Now, 
for mystery lovers. The Friday Night Vetter Mystery Series is back for Christmas with a chiller called Chris or Crimson Snow. It's from the wicked mind of Margaret Reveille, the Chilliwack Players Guild, pleased to present this exciting tale located in modern-day Chilliwack and sure to become a holiday classic with narration by former Chilliwack MP Chuck Strahl. Crimson Snow premieres December the 17th, 7 o'clock, on Chill TV's social media platforms. And we will bring you updates on these events and other notable holiday celebrations that you can enjoy with your family. Coming up, a conversation with Chilliwack Hope MP, Mark Strahl. Chill TV News in conversation with Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Strahl as uh, things are, uh, as, as one can appreciate, uh, evolving very quickly. Mark, I want to talk on a personal level as this is affecting everyone. We have spoken with the likes of Jason Lum and MLA Kelly Padden, Jason Lum, the FVRD chair. Uh, we know what official lines are supposed to be, but on a personal level, uh, any property damage with you? How's your dad, Chuck? How are you guys holding up? I mean, yes, you have your job as an MP, but there's also an emotional tale, take on all of this. Uh, we in the media are feeling it. I'm, sh I'm sure you are. How are you holding up? Well, I, I think I, you know, first of all, I'm extremely proud of the people I represent. Uh, I think I have, I have been emotional over the last ten days, but it's usually because I'm just so overwhelmed with. Pride uh, of, the, of the farmers who rushed to the aid of their uh, of their fellow farmers on the Sumas Flats, the people that rushed in to to save the uh, Barrowtown uh, pump station. You know, so I, I admit that I have been uh, I have been experiencing some some strong emotions, but they're generally you know, a lump in your throat thinking about what other people have been doing uh, personally. Um, we had you know we we do live in a, a low lying part of the. The valley but didn't have any uh, water issues at our place uh, um, have, have had some you know road closures to get around but but nothing like uh, those folks in Yarrow who found themselves underwater or or our neighbors uh, to the west who are, who have lost everything so uh, thankful for for you know the the uh, the personal situation and grateful for the community that I represent uh, just showing our true colors uh, all the way from hope uh, down to down to the Barrowtown pump station, as I mentioned, it's been uh, it's been pretty special to to see. And uh, we've uh, we on Chill TV with our our Friday Night Vetter Mysteries, we've been able to touch base and at least see your dad, Chuck Strahl. How's he doing? <laughs> How's the family well, handling up? Uh, yeah. So so uh, in terms of you know he's doing good. He's uh, he's up in Ryder Lake, so no threat of. Of, uh, of any uh, flooding from the valley, obviously uh, they've had some some road issues up there. But uh, but no, I, I know that he's been in touch through his uh, role with the as an honorary colonel with the uh, with the uh, Canadian Forces. They've been talking to the reserve units there that have been uh, that have been put on standby. So yeah, no, uh, Dad's doing good, uh, and uh, the whole family. Uh, thankfully, a lot, some some folks pitched in to help those that. That did find themselves under evacuation order, and I, I just, you know, people want to help, including uh, family members. They just, they just want to be pointed in the right direction. Uh, with uh, highways opening up, and uh, now both CP and CN Rail seems to be rolling along. Uh, when it comes to CP and CN, uh, is there federal money that is going to uh, the rebuild effort there, or is that more of a provincial jurisdiction? How is that working right now? Yeah, I've spoken to both CPNCN uh, in the last couple of days to uh, to get updates on on their progress. Uh, they've been able to do incredible work. Even some of the some of the uh, catastrophic rail damage that we've seen pictures in the news. They were talking about they've almost got those completely fixed and are expecting to be back on those lines uh, by midnight tonight. So um, I know it is costing the the rail lines an enormous amount of money to do that. I'm not sure what the 
the financial compensation will be, if that just, uh, they absorb that or if that uh, does come from uh, some federal funding, but uh, we'll sort that all out. I'm just so thankful um, that they're back and, and getting the supply chains up and running. Uh, CN also uh, sent a train up uh, along with VIA to, uh, to rescue stranded uh, motorists from Hope uh, there uh, the same day that the highway opened. So they've been there for our community and, and are going to be uh, able to start to get those supply lines going again uh, as of midnight tonight is their hope. There are uh, some interesting memes that have come across social media, and I, I'm curious to know because it's coming, this is coming from out of province, across the country, and from some media that I know, I've seen in the United States. Is this our Katrina? Well, yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't had time to <laughs> to be uh, to be looking at memes. I think it's obviously uh, it is. Uh, an unprecedented uh, flood event that, um, you know, uh, I think that we probably looking back should have been better prepared for. A, a lot of vulnerabilities have been identified by local governments in the past and uh, and senior levels of government have not uh, funded adequately the, the flood protection uh, in this valley. And, and that's something coming out of this when the time is right, we need to make sure that, uh, that our communities do get better protected because you know, these one in 200, one in 500 year events uh, are, are not happening one in 500 years. Uh, we've, we've had a number of extreme weather events here in the last six months even, and we need to start to take seriously the reports and the information that, that we already have and simply haven't acted on. So that's what I'll be pressing for uh, in, the, in the days and weeks ahead. Um, so is it our own Katrina? I've, I've been saying since I was a boy, they've been telling us that an earthquake was going to rattle the region and cut us off from the rest of the country. Um, well, it wasn't an earthquake. It was, uh, it was an atmospheric river, something I'd never heard of uh, in, before a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it did cut us off, and we need to learn some lessons from that too. We, uh, here in Chilliwack, we used to have a, a land forces base that, that could have provided a, an awful lot of help. Um, now the, the nearest land forces base is a province and uh, a mountain range or five away. So uh, we need to look at um, what we learned out of this. Uh, I think uh, the federal government needs to be there as a major partner to ensure that we're ready for an even bigger event, which obviously would happen if the Fraser River was ever involved in any, uh, in any sort of overland flooding. Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Straw, we will definitely be uh, having one of these conversations again very soon. Thanks again. Thank you. And you're watching Chill TV. Chill TV Sports, the Vancouver Canucks have Finn. The Calgary Flames have Harvey the Hound. What about Chilliwack FC? Voting is on now until November the 29th to decide on a mascot design for that team. There are three choices. All those who entered the contest will be receiving a Chilliwack FC hoodie from Soccer Plus. The final winner of the contest will receive an Adidas tracksuit from Chilliwack FC and Soccer Plus. Both the University of Fraser Valley Cascades and the Trinity Western Spartans volleyball and basketball games that were scheduled for this coming weekend have been postponed as flooding in BC continues to impact travel in the pro province. Canada West was the one that made the unilateral decision. So go to either the Cascades or the Spartans social media to find the new schedules. An initial 18 skaters that will participate in the three-on-three Outdoor All-Star Tournament in January on the 15th of that month in Penticton were unveiled by the BC Hockey League. Chiefs defenseman Abram Weeb is in the mix. One skater from each team was voted on to the roster after a poll of all 18 BC Hockey League coaches. The remaining slots will be determined by you, a fan vote. Go to the Chilliwack Chiefs social media so you can vote. Chill TV weather, yes, it's another atmospheric river, or three, but not as potent as the one that caused all the devastation. Highs around eight. 
If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane. Thank you.